Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you one of the most powerful tools within your Shipping Easy account. Shipping rules. Shipping rules allow you to automate nearly everything about the shipping process, from assigning carrier service and packaging, printing a specific packing slip, to even purchasing and printing the label automatically. So let's get started. To start, click on Settings in the top right of the app. Then, on the right side, under Shipment Settings, select Shipping Rules. You can see my existing rules here. So without going into each rule, I'll talk about how this page works. These arrows on the left allow you to move the rule up or down in the order. This is important because rules run in the order they appear here, top to bottom. This allows for much greater flexibility in your automation if you build your rules with that in mind. So if an order is affected by more than one rule, make sure the last one you want to take effect is at the bottom. Just take into account that if something isn't working right with your rules, the main cause might be the order in which they are run. Then over on the right, we have the three buttons to edit, duplicate, and delete the rule. A rule can be edited at any time. Duplicating rules is extremely useful if you have multiple complex rules with slight differences. And before deleting a rule, make sure this will not affect another part of your workflow. Now we're ready to see how one is made. Let's hit Add New and see how rules work. Basically, rules consist of two parts, an if statement and a then statement. If tells Shipping Easy what to look for, and then tells it what to do when it finds it. The options you see in the dropdowns are mostly based on information that Shipping Easy gets from your orders or some data you've set up, like product categories or contact tags. Keep in mind that if you use Shipping Easy for your inventory management or customer marketing, there are rule options available for those solutions here. I'll build a few rules of increasing complexity to show you how they work. For the first example, let's say I want to send a specific packing slip to international customers informing them about my return policy. I've already created the packing slip, so I just have to apply it with a rule which is very simple. In the if section, I'll just have it look for international orders, so destination is equal to international. In the then section, I'll say set packing slip template international, which is the name of the template I created. I'll give the rule a name called international packing slip. I'll skip over the radio buttons for now and hit save. Boom, easy. Now let's make a rule that splits up orders that come from a specific product category. These products must be shipped by themselves even if they are part of a larger order. So I'll make a new rule, and for the first if condition, I'll have it checked for the product category solo shipping. Then I'll add another if condition that checks for multiple line items. Then. In the then section, I'll have it split all line items so that every line item becomes its own order and assign those new orders to the solo shipping category to make them easy to be seen on the orders page. A slightly more complicated rule, but still very useful. For my last rule, I'll really show you how you can turn a complicated situation into an automated rule. I'll make a rule to automatically print the label for a specific type of order. I have a product category called 8x8x8, which are all products that fit into my 8x8x8 box if the quantity is 1. So my rule will check a few different things. Let's take a look. First, I have to make sure the product purchase is in my 8x8x8 product category. Then, I'll make sure the destination is domestic because I'm assigning a domestic service to these orders. Then I want to make sure the quantity is only one. Now Shipping Easy knows exactly what to look for, so I'll move on down to the then statement, which will be a little simpler. We're going to have it apply my priority mail shipping preset to these orders, because 8x8x8 is the perfect size to take advantage of our flat rate green cubic rates. Finally, for the radio buttons at the bottom, I'm going to turn on instant label for these orders. This is something you should be absolutely sure about before activating, but it will automatically buy this label and send it to the print queue, or directly to the printer if you have ConnectEasy set up. 
This will effectively remove my most common order from my shipping process and allow me to concentrate on more complicated and less predictable orders. However, you must be very careful when turning on Instant Label, as it will spend your postage automatically. As for the other radio buttons, you can send to orders page, which is what you want to choose if you ship from the orders page using Instant Rate or Buy and Print. Send to Ready to Ship page if you use that page to process your orders. Then finally, Drop Ship if you want to send this order to be fulfilled by Amazon. You must have an active Amazon FBA account, and any products affected by this rule must be present and in stock at FBA. So I'll hit Save to finalize my rule and streamline my shipping process. I highly recommend taking some time to figure out some effective rules for your business. One hour of writing rules could save countless hours down the line. Once you have your rules written, it's easy to test if they work the way you want them to. Head back to the orders page, select the orders you want to test your rules with, open the More drop-down at the top, and select Rerun Shipping Rules. This will remove the orders and put them back in, running them through the rules in the process. It's the easiest way to tell if your rules need tweaking or are working correctly. Well, there you go. Check out the description for links to our Best of Shipping Rules guide and more information about rules in general. Thanks for watching, everyone.